we thank him for blessing us to be together once again. And we're going to get ready to start our Sabbath school. And thank you for tuning in, whether you are calling in or whether you're joining us live by Facebook. We want to go to God in a word of prayer. And we're going to ask that you would mute your phones. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, we come yes. thanking and praising you, O oh God, for allowing us to be in your temple once again. Thanking you, O oh Lord, for your protection. Thank you for your goodness unto us. Thank you how you provided. You washed over us, and you've answered our prayers. You've taken care of our needs. And for that, we say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you, O oh God, for having your spirit that abides on the inside and protecting us and watching over us leading and guiding us, oh God. Thank you for the Sabbath school, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I come asking you, oh Lord, that you will bless us, open our understanding of you, help us to learn of you, oh Lord, and as we learn, help us to be a doer of your word. Amen. Spirit of God, Amen. that makes learning and teaching easy. I call upon your name, yes, Lord Jesus, yes. that you will bless us, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. We don't take this for granted, oh Lord Jesus, because it didn't have to be so. We praise your holy name, God, for what you've done for our families, how you washed over us, oh Lord, and we ask, oh God, that you would bless the leaders of this country. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Help them to call upon your name. Give somebody a mind, oh, yes. oh God, that they will call on you and seek you for your will, God, concerning the people, oh Lord Jesus. Bless our pastors, oh God, give them the wisdom, yes. hallelujah, to lead your people in such a time as this. Yes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we need you, God, hallelujah, like never before. Yes, Lord God, we need you, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, hallelujah, God. We appreciate you, God, thank hallelujah. you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we pray unto thee. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah to his name. It's good to see you all. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Amen. I'm glad I'm here. Amen. Amen. We don't just, we don't know. Right. We just don't know how these things are going to play out. That's right. But we are confident in God. Why? Because he's our keeper. He's our, keeper. He's our protector. Yes. All right. So at this time, we are going to turn it over to the hands of our, I know I'm not going to sing the Sabbath school song this morning, but we're going to turn it over to the hands of our teachers, our Digger Preston and our Apostle James, that we have a really good lesson today. Yes. yes. Good yes. lesson. Yes. Good lesson. Hallelujah to his name. I hope that you that are joining us Facebook Live, as we always announce, that you can get a copy of our Sabbath School lesson on um, Amazon.com, and um, you can get it kindled if you so desire. It's available to you. I strongly encourage you to go out there and take a look um, at these lessons because they are certainly beneficial to us. It is the Sabbath School Book House of God Lessons 2019-2020, uh, um, the Sabbath School Lessons. This is the, the cover of the book. So if you so desire, please, sir, please, ma'am, go out there and get your copy. You certainly won't be disappointed. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to the hands of our teacher, Deacon President, and our Apostle Ryan. Amen. Amen. So Saints, happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. We're certainly glad to see all of you and to all of our listeners that have dialed in and to all of our uh, individuals that are watching us on Facebook Live. We're excited about the lesson today. And as we typically open Sabbath school, we say, welcome to the house of God. Yes. Where we are a Christ-centered, Bible-based church that endeavors to teach the truth of God and have a positive impact on our community by demonstrating the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Amen. really what we want to make sure that we do today is we want to get into God's word because this lesson, why keep the commandments of God, uh, is, is one of the questions that's not only in the world today, but will be in the church world. And you will hear a lot of people say we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. And Therefore, I don't need to keep the commandments, but we're going to jump into that today to spend some time answering some of these questions and getting into God's Word. But before I jump into our introduction, I want to turn it over to our Apostle Raglan and see if he has any comments before we jump into the lesson. Apostle? Thank you, Deacon Preston. I just want to say good morning to everybody. We thank God for, um, 
for you, the uh, listening and viewing audience. We thank God for seeing some of the saints in the sanctuary on today. We have opened up to have a few more people than we've had in the past. And this is a very special day for us because this is our 100th anniversary. Now we had this gala, amen, amen. We had this gala event plan and we were gonna do all these things, but when the pandemic came, everything just got shut down. And the Lord said the same, we'll be celebrating 100 plus one next year. But if that doesn't work, we thank God for today. Amen. We thank God for the 100 years that he has allowed this church to be here in and, 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 and what we call Compound, but Gordonsville, Virginia. And just a blessing. And, and as Deacon Preston was saying, great lesson, great lesson. These are the, if you're not a Sabbath keeper, if you're not a, let me just say this. We always say Sabbath keepers, but the Sabbath is just one of That's right. 10 commandments. That's right. And uh, this lesson today is actually sharing Hopefully, a better understanding to people in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's right. Why it's still important that we keep the commandments of God, and I think that's the thing. As Deacon Press was saying a moment ago, a lot of churches are saying, a lot of pastors and ministers are saying, you don't have to keep the commandments. That's right. But what they're really saying, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. That's right. <laughs> because the other nine, they they will adhere to. That's right. But he said, if you offend at one point, you're guilty of all. So we don't want to be guilty of anything to do with the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So it's interesting as we, as we kick off this lesson and you mentioned our history, I think it's really important because this will tie into our lesson is that when our founder, R.A.R. Johnson, came here to right. Cobham, <laughs> he, he met a man, Elder Charlie Lewis. Right, right. Uh, and from my understanding, the historical perspective, uh, Elder Lewis was not an educated man, but when he heard the Sabbath, when he heard the doctrine of Jesus Christ, uh, he asked God, uh, yeah. which, which day is... The Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to him and said, Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath. Saturday. And so when you think about that piece of a man in the country who actually takes a stand to obey God's word and keep his commandments, I think in a hundred years uh, from now until this point in time is that that's really important for our history and important for the body of Christ. So yes, I'm yes. going to jump into this lesson today. So why keep the commandments of God? And I want to just go to our introduction. It said, let it be settled in the minds of all that Christ's sacrifice on Calvary is a standalone. Had Jesus not offered himself on behalf as a substitutionary sacrifice, there would be no forgiveness of sins, nor any chance of reconciliation with God. All would die in their sins. The scriptures are clear. We are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift. The scriptures are equally clear. No flesh will be justified, declared blameless before a holy God by works. Simply, there is nothing by the way of human effort, nor some meritorious act worthy to earn salvation. We are totally indebted to the finished work of Christ our Redeemer, whose sacrifice was acceptable unto God. Now all who put their faith and trust in his atoning sacrifice for their sins have the gift of righteousness and the hope of eternal life. So our memory verse is Acts 15, 11. We believe through the grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are, shall be saved even as they. Biblical application. We acknowledge we're saved by grace through faith in the Messiah, so we keep the commandments of God. First and foremost, God has declared in his word, if you love me, keep my commandments. This charge has never been rescinded. The scriptures teach expressly the obedience of God's commandments is how our love for him is best expressed and perfected. It is in obedience to his word we show forth a surrendered heart that trusts in his ways and not our own. Also in keeping of his commandments, we are promised life, prosperity, good success, doing what is right and good in his sight. In addition, Jesus kept, taught, and endorse the commandments of God as well as the Apostle Paul and other apostles. Lastly, as people called to holiness, our obedience to God's commandments enables us to discern between clean and unclean, between holy and unholy, so that we remain undefiled from pollutions of the world. From the beginning, in the garden, it was evident man was never meant to act or be independent from his creator, but he was to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. 
The commandments of God are instructional, providing clear definition of how to worship, serve, and love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, while remaining free from the pollutions of the world. So I wanted to read our introduction, but what I really want us to make sure that we do in this lesson today, there are really going to be three points I want to make sure that we cover in this lesson. Uh, the first point is, what does the Bible say about still keeping the commandments of God? Uh, did Jesus keep the commandments, and does he expect us to keep them? And then finally, if we're under grace, do we still need to keep Ooh. the law or the commandments? And so, that last one, <laughs> um, uh, Brother Deacon, is the one that uh, I think we struggle with That's right. as, as people of God. That's right. When I say people of God, I don't mean just the house of God. I'm just talking about the body of Christ. Right. The body of Christ, and these are people who profess to love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, and, but, and we are under a dispensation of grace. And I think people confuse, and I, I'm going to get ahead of you because that's the last point, but uh, people confuse the dispensation of grace and keeping the commandments. Yeah, and so I want to make sure we get to that point. Yes. I think it's really important for people to understand the commandments of God have not been done away with. Mm -hmm. but it's really important foundationally for us to understand that. But I want to just jump to the point that I, the Sabbath School writer does a really good job. And here's the thing, as a church, we understand. We are not saved by keeping the commandments. Okay? Not by works. We're not saved by keeping the commandments. And I think what people who interact with us and they hear that we're commandment keepers, they would actually think, well, do you believe that you're saved by the commandments of God? No. no, no. We, we fundamentally understand, as, he, as Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, he says in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace are ye saved through faith, right. and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works least any man should boast. So we just want to just lay that on the table today that in the house of God we teach it is by the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ, his shed blood. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the water baptism in Jesus name. We believe you need to receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And that is the thing that we believe and we continue to teach. But even once we teach that and you have that, there is an expectation that you would keep God's commandments. Yes. So we'll start with our first scripture. So the first thing I want us to uh, look at today is what does the Bible say about keeping the commandments of God? So I want you to go to Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to actually jump uh, to verse 11. And remember, as we've been going through our teaching model, I encourage you to make notes as you study God's Word and you hear God's Word because it's really important that there may be some things in the lesson that you may have questions on, and we're going to go through several scriptures today, and then we will entertain questions. But uh, one of the methods I want us to make sure that we have is what did you, your observation, your interpretation, and then your application. Apostle. I just want to, um, um, on Monday night Bible study, one of the sisters that um, that is uh, on the broadcast probably now, I mean, on, on one way or the other, said that she has been using that, that model uh -huh. and wanted you to know that that has been a big help Amen. to um, her understanding and the appli application of God's Word. Okay, well good. And so uh, that model is really good as we look at the Scripture. So let's jump into the Scripture. Revelation chapter 22, verse 11 through 15. I always think it's important. You've got to understand the writer. Remember, John is the writer of the book of Revelation. So who is John? He's one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Some say he's the beloved disciple. He's the disciple that when Jesus is on the cross, he actually tells John, this is your mom. And so take care of her. So Jesus trusts John so much that he's like, I'm going to leave this disciple in charge of my own mother. John is the only disciple, historically speaking, that has never did not get martyred or killed for the gospel. He's an older man now writing this letter in exile. And this is what he writes to the church in verse 11. He says, um, I'm going to start at verse 10. And he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. 
So I think this is important context. Just text. before you go yes. further, um, to those that are, are calling in, uh, there is a lot of shuffling of paper or something, and it's distracting to the others. Again, we ask if you're calling in, please mute your phone so um, the other saints who are calling can understand and hear the lesson better. Thank you. Amen. And so as we look at this, this chapter in Revelation 22, John is actually writing about Jesus' return. And he says to the people of God, he's like, whatever state you're in, you're going to remain in that state. If you're righteous, you're righteous. If you're holy, you're holy. If you're unholy, you're unholy. And then he talks about Jesus is coming back quickly. And Jesus is talking about that. He's like, I'm coming back quickly. My reward is going to be with me. And I'm going to, I'm going to give every man according to his works. And then in verse 14, he says, blessed are they that what? Do. I've got to actually what? i got to do what? His commandments. i got to do the commandments. So uh, James talks about it's one thing to be a hearer of the word, but, but the expectation that Christ has for us as believers, not just house of God, but for body of Christ, is that we what? We do. We, do. we actually do the commandments. Which and do interpret to be to keep. That's right. So do, and so when we think about that, and I'm actually going to, when we, when we get to that point of keep, if you look up the Greek word for keep, it's something really important that we want to make sure we are mindful of because it actually ties into this lesson. So here's what I heard, Apostle, as my observation. So I observed that I'm blessed if I do the commandments. Mm -hmm. And if I am to think about the interpretation, then I've got to ask myself, why wouldn't I keep the commandments? Right. And then the promise of this is, if I actually do his commandments, then I'm going to have a right to what? The tree of, the tree of life. life. And I'm going to be able to enter into the gates, into the city. So now the application becomes, do the commandments. Right. And then I've got to ask myself the question, why wouldn't I keep the commandments of God. Apostle, anything you want to add from that? I, I think that Revelation, like you said, John is, is winding down. Mm -hmm. This is the, you know, the final chapter and he's winding down and, and he knew spiritually or however, he knew going forward that this would be an issue. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, the Spirit of God let him know that as you close in this book, this is going to be an issue. Right. And as the book of Revelation is, is coming to its conclusion, let the people know that you must do the commandment Amen. because you know I know you're gonna to get to verse 15 because you're talking about when you do all of these things that's great but what happened if you don't that's right and so I think that's the, now again this isn't Deacon Preston's writing in yeah, verse 15. this is a harsh one this was harsh and I want you to hear it well but uh, as John writes it he says this he says I want you to do the commandments you're gonna have a right to the tree of life you're gonna enter through the gates of the city but then he says for without yes are dogs. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty harsh term. Right. For the Bible to put you in the category of a dog, that's a really harsh term. And then he says, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So as I was looking at this scripture, Apostle, it's interesting. I'm sitting here saying, well, John could have just said, man, give me verse 14 without verse 15. Right. Just give me blessed are they to do it. That's good. But John makes this really important distinction. He says, here's the option. Just like uh, Moses talked to the children of Israel, or God was speaking to the children of Israel. This day I set before you life and death. Right. You now have the choice. Have the John's doing the same thing. You now have the choice. You either keep the commandments, and if you don't, the, this is what you're actually going to be seen as mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. Any thoughts on that, Apostle, as we really lay the groundwork for the saints and the people observing us today on why we keep the command? I, I really appreciate John's writing here because if I made these statements to anybody, right. <laughs> it might be a fight. That's right. Because these are harsh terms, yeah. you know. It talks, it, it's attacking the, it really attacks the individual that does not observe the commandments of God. And um, people saying that, you know, God is under, he, he's love, he's understanding. Men and women today in the body of Christ have the mentality that I have the choice mm -hmm. to offer to God mm -hmm. what I want to give him. And he said, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you can give me right. that I'm going to accept is what I asked for. That's right. And, and that's what he's saying here. I'm asking for the people who love me mm -hmm. to do the commandments. And, and, and if you do that, 
I got something for you. I got a reward for you. Amen. And that reward is the tree of life, eternal life. Amen. And that's what everybody, all these church goers are, are going for one reason. They're going to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. We don't just go to church just to get away from the community, from families, from all of that. Right. We go to church with an expectation that we're going to have Life everlasting, life after death. That's right. And, and our, when we transition from the life that we know it here, that we're just going to receive a reward of eternal life when, when judgment comes. Okay. So he is saying that I got that, but you're not going to offer me something I didn't ask for. Amen. Good point. Great point, Apostle. We've got, we've got a question, and I want to make sure, I want to get to one more scripture, and then we're going to entertain questions. And so I want you to think about heading number one. What does the Bible say about still keeping the commandments? So what I want to do today is give you a New Testament scripture, because a lot of times people will say we're in a New Testament church, right. we're right. under the new covenant, and so therefore we don't, we're not, we don't need to keep the commandments. But here you just read, in the last book of the new covenant, the New Testament, mm -hmm. John is saying you got to keep the commandments. But now go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, and then after that I'm going to get Sister Charmaine's question. Um, so if you go to Ecclesiastes, and so I, the reason I love looking at Ecclesiastes is we have, uh, besides Jesus Christ, the wisest man, uh, as we would think, uh, as, as he prayed for wisdom to lead God's people, and because God gave him wisdom, he writes something to the body of Christ and believers that I think is really important. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Now, this is the last chapter of Solomon's writing, and I think it's important. So he says this, and I'm going to read 13 and 14. Let us hear what? The conclusion. And he says this, of the what? The whole matter. I want, I'm summing up the book right here. I'm summing up this book. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Number one, fear God. Yes. And he says what? Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That judgment piece is really important because the book of James actually talks about the commandments are actually going to be the thing that's utilized for your judgment. Um, and so I want to make sure that we understand that this is important. You, you, yeah, yeah that, that last statement is, is, is vitally important for people of God to understand. You're going to be judged right. in that final judgment, That's right. that day of reckoning. You're going to be judged by the commandments. That's right. So if you don't keep the commandments or you teach people they don't need to keep the, the, the commandments, you are instructing people to go to a, down the path of damnation. That's right. But that's what's going to be your, the, the thing that's going to judge you is your keeping of the commandments. Amen. Not just the Sabbath, but the keeping of all of God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I love that point because I think we miss that sometimes. And I think, and this is why I want to get through these scriptures and lay foundation, we've really got to help people understand what I believe has been some confusion about law and grace and being under the law and under grace. Because when you think you're under the law, just because you're, we, we believe that we should keep God's commandments doesn't mean we're excluding grace. But right. grace doesn't give me permission just to stay in sin. And so we'll touch on that scripture. Sister Charmaine, we want to get your question, and then we want to jump to the next set of scriptures, and then we'll open it up for questions after that. Sister Charmaine. Okay, so... Keeping the commandments is not just keeping the commandments. I've heard all my life. I've grown up in the church. So the things that you're saying is easy for me to embrace because I've known these things. Right. Um, how... Was there, where is the, and you're probably going to get to this, but I, I want to go ahead and ask it anyway. Mm -hmm. Where, did something change from the beginning to where we are now? Okay. The reason why people are not, it, it seems like it's a difficult thing to embrace that we should keep the commandments of God. Because even though the scripture says in Revelation, you're a dog, if I don't, I'm not grabbing that, that I really should keep it. So how can a God that I love so much and that loves me really say that about me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I want to deal with that topic, and that's one that I, I'm going to just put in the parking lot a little bit, but I will address that. I think it's really important for us to understand that we are saved by grace. 
That's fundamental. Mm -hmm. But once I'm saved, there are expectations. Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is, is that, um, so for example, you could actually potentially get a job and not be qualified for the job. Someone would, you could know somebody, and so they give you grace, they give you the job. But once you get the job, you might have got it by grace, but somebody's expecting you to do the job. You have an expectation, and so what happens is, is that I think this teaching around grace and not keeping the commandments has really permeated in the church world where people are missing the blessing of the commandments. So let me just step back for a minute. When you look at the Ten Commandments, I want to just clarify some things. The commandments don't give you any method on how to deal with your sin. No. They simply point out. They point out something. But here's the other thing. God gave us the commandments not to keep us from something. He gave us the commandments to be a blessing to us. The commandments are like a, a, the guardrails of life. And so you put the guardrails on. If, you drive, if you're driving on a mountainous road, man, aren't you glad for the guardrails? Because if you go over without the guardrails, what's going to happen? Are you going to die? I'm going to die. And so what God gave us in the commandments, the commandments reveal God's character. And he says, listen, these things aren't meant to keep you from doing stuff. Mm -hmm. These things aren't meant as a punishment to you. These things are meant to give you an unbelievable quality of life. And I think what's happened is people have polluted the commandments to say, man, those are restrictive. They don't give me the freedom. I don't have the liberty. Uh, I've got liberty in Christ. Well, you do. Yeah. But Christ has some expectations because he does say in John 14 and 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But I want to get to Sister Charmaine's point, and I'm going to address that later on in this. But Apostle, anything you want to add as we continue to dig into this lesson? There is a history piece to all of this. The keeping of the commandments was not an issue That's right. in the body of Christ, in the recorded scriptures. So that's what, you know, uh, it's, it's addressed, it's, people deal with it, the apostles dealt with it, Jesus dealt with it, but it was almost 300 years mm -hmm. after Christ um, had ascended back into the heavens that this whole thing about keeping the commandments um, we have to understand historically what the Roman Empire right. did to the body of to the body of Christ, not for the body of Christ. That's right. But when you get the history of it and you find out that you know uh, through, through the writing of the scriptures, uh, commandment keeping or Sabbath observance mm -hmm. was not an issue. That's right. The Roman and I, I'm gonna have to point out for what it is. The Roman Catholic Church did an excellent job of distorting the truths of God. Amen. And then you read in Revelation, Revelation even um, addressed this great holic, this great holic who was going to come and, and just turn things upside down. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get that history and you know where you're, for those who don't observe the commandments of God, when you go back and find out, well, what gave Constantine, mm -hmm. his mother and all these other people, the right, right to do what they did. That was not a, a divine revelation. That's right. That was a choice that they made and then enforced people to do it. And that's a whole nother history yeah. lesson, a whole nother lesson, but I just want to point that out because you, you, you're looking at good people. Mm -hmm. You look at people that love the Lord, people that are dedicated to, to the Lord and, and to the service of the Lord, but there's something in their psyche that's saying that I hear those commandment keepers talking, <laughs> but I know that I don't have to do that. You know, we don't have to do that anymore. But when you find out where it came from, I think it would change something about what people think. Yeah, Apostle, and, and that's going to be a lesson that we need to have <laughs> yes. uh, to, to help people understand that that's, that's created a lot of confusion. And so when you go back historically and you look at Constantine's mother, uh, most people wear crosses, but she was a big proponent of that. She was the one who really right. went to Jerusalem. She did a lot of things to establish things for the early church, believing doing the right thing. But the other thing, too, with that push from the Roman Empire is that their view of the Jews, 
they believed that the Jews actually killed Jesus. Right. And so they wanted to distinguish themselves from the Jews. And again, that's just some things historically I yeah. think we need to yeah. get into in another more, lesson. Yeah, to more, just yeah. help educate our listening audience on that started and then it just created this divide. But your point is well, well taken. The early church had no issues with the commandments. They were commandment keepers. The Church of Colossians, the church, all these other churches that came, that was created, mm -hmm. they were not law observers. They did not know. But when they were taught, right. you know, when, when, when these churches that Paul and others uh, formed in the New Testament after Jesus was ascended, they, they adhered mm -hmm. to the word. Yeah, people came in. And the funny thing was, the ones that came in was not trying to take them from the commandments. Mm -hmm. They were trying to take them from things, right. ritual type things. Right. Great point. And so I think that one of the most important questions we should ask ourselves, did Jesus keep the commandments? Oh, yes. And so now we got to ask ourselves the question. So I'll, here's what I'm trying to build foundationally. What does the Bible say about keeping the commandments? Mm -hmm. And then the next point is, did Jesus himself actually keep the commandments? So go with me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Very familiar passage of scripture, but I want to just unpack that a little bit. And I will say wholeheartedly, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the entire world, he was a commandment keeper. Oh, yes. He kept God's commandments. And so if people say, I want to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. I want to do what Jesus did, then you would keep God's commandments oh, yes. because he kept his commandments. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. And again, I want you to think through this in this model of observation, interpretation, and now application. And so Jesus, if you read the whole chapter of Matthew, this is his Sermon on the Mount. That's yes. very, uh, it's very well known. And then he comes to this point about some teaching. And he says this, and this is Jesus, and this is Matthew's recording of what Jesus actually said. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And so we, we stick on that scripture a lot. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing I think is very important. It's verse 18. He says, for barely I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one job, or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And now here's an important part if you're teaching people not to keep the commandments. Right. It's very, this is scriptural. He says, whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these, these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And so I want to just unpack verse 17 a little bit, Apostle, and then I'll, I want to get your thoughts. So when you think about this, he says, I did not come to destroy. And so when I go to the concordance and I look at the word destroy, um, the Greek word for destroy actually says he did not come to throw down or dissolve the commandments. It says, I came to fulfill, and this means to complete, to cause God's will, as made known in the law, to be obeyed as it should. And so what we see with Jesus, Jesus is actually showing that in uh, under the power of God, I am able to keep the commandments of God. He is the fulfillment and the completion of the commandments of God. And this is completely saying he did not do away with the commandments. Apostle, any thoughts on that? I, I think the piece that this is Matthew 5, and I think the, the full understanding of this was not revealed until the day of Pentecost. Okay. Because um, they had an issue with keeping the commandments. The commandment was given, but you, um, you know, from the time it was given on Mount Sinai, but, but then we find out Jeremiah, the mm. people struggled. Mm. And he said, the day come. That's right. Said the Lord. And I'm not gonna write it on the table of stone, but I'm gonna write it in your hearts. So he, what Jesus is saying here, I am come now mm -hmm. to fulfill that. I'm come now to write the commandments in your heart. No, I'm not doing it today. Mm. I'm, I'm preparing you today. I'm telling you my purpose because from Matthew chapter five, 
in verse 17 until it was brought to fruition mm -hmm. after he ascended in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost was given then now he said you got something mm. that's going to help you keep the commandments because at the time of keeping the commandments the, 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 the law of the enforcement of it was each one checking the other. Right. If if I said uh, Walter Preston did such such a thing, and right. so Charmaine said yes, I'm a witness to it. He would put to death. That's right. Right. Yeah. So Jesus, said, I'm coming to bring this thing to a, to a fulfillment that you're not gonna have to have somebody looking at you mm -hmm. to make sure you keep it. You know. What is he doing? Is he picking up sticks on the Sabbath? Is he doing this? Is he is he committing adultery? Is he stealing? Is he having other gods before me? He said, I'm not going to have to worry about that. I'm bringing this thing to a completion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fulfill it. I'm not doing away with it, to the, but I'm doing away with that, that law that says your brother is responsible to make sure you do it or we kill you. I think it ties into Sister Charmaine's point is when he talks about that in, in Jeremiah 31, and I think it's in Hebrews chapter 10 where he talks about the same thing, that law does not change from the stone to when he takes it from the stone and he puts it in my flesh, right. in my heart of flesh. Good point. There's, yeah. no, there's no change in no that. Change it's it's just itself. now when they kept the commandments in, at the writing of the scripture, they had the commandments on the outside. They had them in their homes. They had them everywhere. And he said, that's great. But the more important part is I need to make sure that those commandments are actually written in your heart. By the Spirit. By the Spirit of yeah. God. And I think that's important. Here's the other thing I'd say, Saints, that I, I have always said is I, before I came into the house of God and I was studying to come into the house of God, the Ten Commandments are the only thing that God spoke and wrote in the Scripture. That's right. I, I think that, to me, that's mind-boggling. So when you think about it, if you go to Exodus 31, if you look at how the commandments were given, God himself, as much as he trusted Moses, as much as they spoke face to face, as much as he revealed himself to Moses, he actually said, and we read it every Sabbath when we're together, and it says, and God spake all these words saying it wasn't he gave it to Moses and Moses to give it to the people. So think about that right there. The God who created the heavens and the earth. He actually said, listen, even though his audience is Israel, he said, I want the world to know that I am speaking these 10 things in place. Right. And he wants you to understand that these commandments. So think of this. God is a king. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. Every kingdom has rules. That's right. And so what are his rules? What are the rules of the king, the king that we serve? They're actually the Ten Commandments. Right. The Ten Commandments are the rules in which God has established his kingdom. And we don't want to talk about it a lot. But if you go to James, James chapter 2, the judgment of, of who we are will actually be based on the Ten Commandments. Because those commandments are actually the rules that set up in his kingdom. Apostle and, and that's, you, you're talking about kingdoms right. and having rules. All of those kingdoms that were set up, all those kingdoms that had rules, had punishment mm. that they that they did if you did not mm. keep the rules. If you didn't keep the rules, you were put to death. Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna read one more scripture, and then what I'm gonna do is I want to make sure that I give an opportunity for questions because I think there are probably gonna be some questions. So it gets back to point number two: Was Jesus a commandment keeper? And so if I say I'm gonna follow Jesus. Um, I've got to know, well, did Jesus keep the commandments? So if he kept them, I'm in really good company if I keep them. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4, 16. And so the apostle said it earlier, and the reality is, and to our listening audience and viewing audience, what will typically happen is, I don't think people have a problem with nine of the commandments. Honestly. Uh, I think most people would say, I think it's really good to honor your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't covet. You shouldn't, yeah, have, no you shouldn't have other God before him. But you're right. I think one of the major sticking points becomes the seven-day Sabbath. Because Constantine, his mother, did such a, his, such a great job. Hey, they, they did a phenomenal job. But I'm asking, if you're in our listening audience today, and you're watching us on Facebook Live, or you're listening, if you've called in, I would ask you to set aside what you've been taught, not that what you've taught has not been good teaching, but I would ask you to hear it through a very clear lens 
and look at it through a new lens of what does the Bible specifically say about God's commandments? Because what happens sometimes, and we have to be careful, that's why I gave the method, observation, uh, interpretation, application. You can actually sit down and read your Bible and get your Bible to say what you want it to say. I can read the Bible to make it conform to what I believe. And that can be very dangerous. So Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Now remember Luke is a very pre precise person because he's a doctor. And he wants to, he, he's the most detailed writer or one of the most detailed writers in the scripture. That's right. And here's what he says. He said, and he came, and he's talking about Jesus. He came to Nazareth where he would have been brought up. So he went back home to go to church. And as it was his custom, he went into the synagogue when? On the Sabbath on day. On the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So what do we know? We know that Jesus, he was a commandment keeper. He talked about, hey, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets. This thing's going to be fulfilled. Heaven and earth have to pass away first. If you walk outside today and you're stepping on earth, the commandments are still in place. If the stars haven't fallen, the commandments are still in place. Jesus actually says here, or the writer records, he actually went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Apostle, you got a thought? Yes, because this is the thing. As his custom was, okay. the issue that people have today is going against their custom. Mm. Think about it. Wow. You grew up outside, the, outside right. of a Sabbath keeper, right. right? That's right. If not knowing anything about the Sabbath, you know, you went away to school, you did all this, and um, the church that you grew up in, mm -hmm. and they had homecoming. They did. And, and you? And, 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 and see, and, but you got a phone call yes. from your mom and your dad saying, hey, Walt, um, you coming for homecoming? Yep. Yes, I am. I want you to know the homecoming this year will be on Saturday. What? Oh no. Why why are we having homecoming on Saturday? Mm -hmm. And our custom our custom is that we're gonna have a Sunday. Mm. So we what we, we, we said is we read the scripture in Luke that as his custom was from a baby. Mm. Jesus' custom was he went to church on Saturdays. Right. See? So it was easy for him to come back. Mm. What the struggle is, good people who have customs that are not in line and it hard it was hard for you hard for most people to come away from the custom mm -hmm. to get into follow what what jesus actually said and and that's a process so i i i understand with my brothers and sisters that struggle with how do i get to this point of actually being comfortable mm -hmm. showing up yeah. for sabbath school not sunday school that's right showing up for a sabbath worship service not a sunday worship service. Why? Because of customs. When you can break away from customs break and get to the word of God, then you can be a whole different a per, a person. But what this does address is the fact that Jesus was a commandment keeper. Jesus was a Sabbath keeper. And he said, thank not I come to destroy the custom. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to destroy the custom, but I came to be the fulfillment of it that make it easier for people to be uh, command keepers. And I love that point on the custom piece because customs are strong. Oh my goodness, yes. Cust customs and traditions can bind you so much that you would actually take the custom and tradition over the word of God. Yes. And that's what Jesus actually addressed. He said, in vain you do worship me. You're teaching the commandments of men and not keeping. Keep for doctrine too. Yeah, you're keeping them for doctrine and you're not teaching the commandments of God. Here's the thing I would say in my time in the house of God, because you're right, I came from a first day church, mm -hmm. uh, had phenomenal teaching from great people that I loved and respected. And I think the danger that I fell into is once I start studying, and this was from your instruction to Apostle Ragland's instruction. I was given the instruction to study the scripture. Yeah. And I remember Apostle Ragland said this to me, and I'll never forget this. He said, you know what, brother? If you find where the Sabbath has been done away with, I'll keep whatever you find. He said, if you find that Sunday's the Sabbath and I'm wrong, I'll keep Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, man, that's an easy task right there. I'm going to... This man is, I'm, I'm educated, I got these degrees, and I'm, I'm really smart, and I left the church, I'll never forget it, I was excited, I'm like, I'm going to prove this man wrong, and man, I start researching, and I start researching, 
And I started studying the scripture and everything. And what happened was, it was through that study, not with the lens of the custom, but what was God's word saying? And the great thing about, I will say this, if you're listening and you're not a part of our organization, the house of God, and you want to learn, we give you time to learn oh, because yes. it's, it's hard to pull away from those customs. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. We understand that, listen, you, you, you mentioned homecoming. Homecoming happened every third Sunday in June. We had homecoming. It was just part of who we were. Custom. It was a custom. But the, the thing that I think as we look at this today, we will give people time once you hear the truth to walk in the truth. The last thing I'll say on this is God calls you. He may not call your family. That is monumental. Yes. That is so monumental because people who God opened up their understanding mm -hmm. to his truths, they struggle with, right. with right. not bringing, being able to bring their family along. And there are people who come to the truth, but they spend so much of their time mm -hmm. trying to teach mama, teach daddy, brother, sister, aunts, uncles, grandma, everybody, to, that this is true. And they, they, they say, well, I hear what you're saying. They, they're kind to you. That's right. But then the next week, they don't do anything differently. And, and once God reveals his truth to you, you have the responsibility to observe them while you continue to work with family members and, and friends. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and then I'm going to open up the questions. If you're struggling now, if you feel God has called you and you're studying God's word, he's called you to... To, to start keeping the commandments of God, to be obedient to God's word. I, I open this up to anyone. Please call me and please email me. Please, you know, get in touch with me because that journey is, and I'm, I'm just honest with you, it's a difficult journey. Yes. That when you start to keep the Sabbath and you not leave family, but you do something different than what you've been brought up in, mm -hmm. That's a hard thing to do, and so I'd be more than welcome to share my experience and help you through that. So I wanted to open it up to questions before we jump into our last one, because I'm under grace, do I have to keep the law? So any questions we got? Do we have any questions, Sister Rhonda? Um, um, those that are calling in, uh, if you have any questions, please do so. Uh, ask your question now. I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Uh, um, uh, I know in Genesis, uh, around about the second chapter, it says that God rested after he had completed all of his work. Right. It said that he rested on the seventh day and blessed it. So my question is, I'm trying to figure out when did it change from the seventh day to the first day of the week? Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent question, Sister Thurston. The thing is, it never changed. That's why we're talking about it. through the writing of the scriptures. You don't see, uh, and, and even in Hebrew chapter four, where it said, "Had he given another day, whether it was Jesus or Joshua, the, the translation uh, for Jesus and Joshua uh, come from the same base word. So, whether Jesus said it or whether Joshua said it, had he given another day, would he not have other otherwise spoken of it? He never spoke of another day." That's when history comes in, I talked about earlier, knowing about Constantine. Actually, it was Constantine's mother mm -hmm. yeah, that right. was influencing him more than Constantine got the, the credit or the, um, of the accusation of, of doing it, but that his mother was the one behind all of this. So yes, it was never spoken of in the scriptures, but um, after the writing of the scripture, that's when uh, others came in and tried to create another day. Amen, yeah, that's a great question. And I think that's why it's so important if you're going to study the Bible that you've got to look at some historical texts. Mm -hmm. So when you go look, some say 323, some say 324 at the Council of Nicaea, yeah. that this is where they actually start beginning the change of the Sabbath day mm -hmm. and instituting some things that will make Sunday the, it the day of worship. It, it, it was done very forcefully because, again, the issue was, so if you look at Greek Orthodox churches and other Orthodox churches, they were staunch Sabbath keepers. Yes. The ch early church were Sabbath keepers. And so Constantine's mother, Constantine, when they came into power, they actually made edicts at the Council of Nicaea to say, hey, the first day of the week, 
the day of the sun, the day of the soul, this is going to be our day of worship to recognize the resurrection of Christ. And again, what happens, because they don't have an understanding of the scripture, they pick the first day when we know that that wasn't that, the day of the resurrection. So I think it's important that we tie those things together, and that's why we need to do another study, but it's important for people to understand. It really is, yes. Uh, so here's what I want to do. If there are no more questions, I want to get to this most important point, I think. Uh, any other questions before I'm being pressed move on? All right. Okay. So, if we are under grace, mm. do we still need to keep the commandments or the law? Before you ask, ask that, let me ask you this. Uh -huh. What is grace? Because mm. we say we are under grace, but I think we have to define what is grace? So and what is the purpose of grace? So, so I want to just answer that question two ways. I want to answer from the standpoint of how I see the law and grace. So I see the law and grace as actually working hand in hand, not two separate things. So what we know in the scripture is that the law actually points out sin. Right. And what grace does, it saves me from the penalty of sin. And so what grace is, it is the favor of God that says, you know what, Walter, you were disobedient to my word, the law, and you should be penalized because of your disobedience. Because of my favor, I'm not going to give you the penalty of right what you deserve right now. I'm going to show you grace. That's my, that's my thought, Apostle. What are your thoughts? And you're exactly on the same page I am. The wages of sin is, is still it. death. Um, but the thing is, under the law, you were put to death immediately. Under grace, as you were saying, you have an opportunity now to commit sin, not be put to death, but given an opportunity to right that wrong so when you move forward, That's right. uh, you have an opportunity that but before you leave this world and, and you meet your final um, judgment, you, that grace saved you down through the years to get you to a point. Let, let me just be real. There are some people that if God had taken 30 years ago, they would have been lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. They would have been lost because they were lawbreakers. Mm -hmm. But over a process of time, and, and, and God kept showing his unmerited favor. He just kept showing favor and favor and, and, and allowed them to keep on living, allowed them to keep on standing until they got to that point. Mm -hmm. That now thy law have I hid in my heart. That's right. That I might not sin against it. The word have I hid in my heart. That I, well, I won't sin against your word. I won't sin against your law. And when they got old enough and, and the process of time, now they're saying, Grace brought me here. That's right. Thank God for grace. Yeah. So, Apostle, I love that. So, I want to go to Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to do Romans 5, 19 through 21, and then I'll keep reading 6 through 2. Because this is a scripture I think is really important. And um, and I would encourage you, if, if you're struggling and saying, man, I'm under grace, so I don't have to keep the commandments. Um, I, I would encourage you to just sit down and continue to read your scripture. Uh, and go through the method that I think it's really important that we understand. So Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 19, and it reads as follows. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So I'm going to stop. The one man is Adam. Adam is the one who sinned. Adam is the one that because he sinned, he passed sin on to everyone else. That's right. That's right. So our father Adam put us under the curse of sin. Mm -hmm. And then it says, so by the obedience of one shall many be made what? Righteous. righteous. So because of Jesus Christ, I'm made righteous. Yes. Right? But then he said, moreover, now we got to deal with this one. The law entered that the offense might abound. So he points out the law entered and guess what happened? My sin kept growing. But it was because the law was pointing it out. Now here's the distinction. It does not say the law is bad. 
It does not say anything bad about the law. It says the law is doing what it's supposed to do. Right. It's pointing out sin. But then this is where I get excited. But he said, but where sin abounded, guess what happened? Grace did much more. Grace did more. much more abound. Yes. So all of us are saved by grace. Mm -hmm. But then he says that as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the Apostle Paul is laying it out. He said, Adam caused this mess. Christ came in and cleaned it up. I'm still dealing with sin, but because I'm dealing with sin, I got the grace of Jesus Christ. And guess what? When I'm sinning, I still get grace. Here's the thing that he said. You're sinning and then you get what? You get grace. You're sinning and you get grace. And, you're, and you can create this cycle, but watch what Paul says next. Highlight this. He says, what shall we say then? And that's again in um, 6. Romans chapter Romans 6, 6, verse 1. Uh -huh. This is important. He said, y'all heard the cycle. Sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Yeah. This is what the people say. I'm under grace for sin. I'm under grace, so guess what I can keep doing? Keep on sinning? I can keep on sinning. Paul says, wait a minute. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? So grace may abound. That grace may what? Abound. He said, God what? God forbid. Now, if you're highlighting a scripture, you got to understand that scripture. Paul says, it's important for you to know the law identifies sin. It points out where your sin is. But don't ever think that just because you're under grace that you can continue in sin. Yes. So now you got to ask yourself the question, why would I keep the law? I would keep the law so I wouldn't sin. Right. So I keep the law because in John it says, actually the, the law identifies sin. Paul says, I would not have known sin except the law said what? He said, I wouldn't have known it. Yeah. I wouldn't have known lust unless the commandment said, thou shalt. So Paul points out, the commandments of God actually point out the sin. Yes, it is. That's right. It points yeah. out yeah. sin. Now here's where people stop. They say it points out sin, but I don't have to keep it. You keep it because it identifies the sin you want to stay away from. Because here is the thing. No sin inherits what? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. There will be no sin in the kingdom. There will be no sin in the kingdom. So I want to just stop right there, Apostle, and have this conversation. Because there are good people who are confused with this point that I'm under grace. And because I'm under grace, I do not have to keep the law or the commandments of God. And the scripture does not support that. Now, it's not supported in scripture. And this thing we have to recognize, we are going to be judged up to the point that we take our last breath. Mm. So if I'm sinning and, and relying upon grace, when I take my last breath, I die in sin. Mm. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. The first scripture you read. Right. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unrighteous, mm. he died unrighteously, but when he wake up on the other side to be judged, he's going to be judged in that state that he died in. Mm. Wow. It's a cycle. Sin, grace. Sin, grace. But you sin, and because in the last time, in the time of judgment, there will be no grace. Mm. See? Righteousness. It's going to swallow up all the mercy and all the grace out there. We're going to be our judgment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be according to what was righteous. Mm -hmm. Not, not mercy, the mercies of God, the grace of God. Mercies and, and grace that have to give way to justice. So, Apostle, <coughs> I'm just asking the question. Mm -hmm. But he's such a loving God. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is where people struggle. How can a loving God who is giving me all this grace actually when my life is over judge me? That's not a God I want to serve. That's not a well, the, that that's God. But see, we're talking about a loving God. Okay. But he's y'all, we're looking at God as being loving. But he also said, my people, mm. if they love me. Wow. Okay. Right, right, right. But right. God, he said, God is so loving, he's so merciful, he's so this, and he won't kill me. But he said, if my people, I'm a loving God, but I need a loving people. Right. That's right. And a loving people will keep my commandments. That's right. That's right. 
I love that point. I, that's the point I think if you're taking away anything, yes, God is a loving God. How do I know I'm proving my love to God? I keep his commandments. Right? The commandments have not been done away with. Uh, the commandments are still in effect like they were when they were given. The commandments are still the thing that reveal the character of God, the holiness of God. And so I just want to focus on the Ten Commandments a little bit because I want people to understand, and then I'm going to get apostle. The first four commandments teach me how to love God. Love God. Yes. The last six commandments teach me how to love my fellow man. And then someone would say, well, didn't he speak some new commandments? When he said, uh, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's just a summary. And that's a summary of those commandments. Apostle, you had something you wanted to share. Um, what is dispensation? Mm. What is a dispensation? A time period. There you go. It's a time period. A dispensation is a time period. Mm -hmm. There was a dispensation of you being punished immediately for sin. Wow. Okay. Right? That was a dispensation. Christ came and he bought a dispensation, a time period mm. of grace being given unto man. But in that dispensation, he warns us about what happened to those who sinned. Mm. Because this dispensation of grace is going to come to an end. That's a good point. And when the dispensation of grace comes to an end, all we're going to be left with is judgment. Mm. And judgment is not going to be uh, based on mercy or grace because that dispensation has come to an end and all we have left is the law and did we keep it. Amen. That's great insight. All right, questions? Yes. So how does the Holy Ghost tie into this? Okay. How does the Holy Ghost tie into this? Yes. And so... So I look at it like this. The Holy Ghost writes these things in my heart. So the Holy Ghost is the thing that it's no longer about the letter. It is about that it's written on my heart. And I think, it, I think it's in Hebrews chapter 10 where he talks about I'll take it from the letter and put it on my heart. And so here's the thing. And I'm going to get excited. The thing I, I believe is that I don't keep the, I, I love, because I love God, I have a desire to please God and I keep his commandments. And the spirit of God, when I would not want to do what God says do, the spirit says to me, this is what you need to be doing. I'm going to give a personal testimony. Uh, two weeks ago, I was studying God's word and the Lord spoke to my spirit and says, I want to delight in you. I, and I thought about that. I was like, wow. I was sitting there studying, and it was just clear. And I think I called a brother in Kentucky, and I said, the Lord has just been dealing with me, is that I want to delight in you. And then as I studied the scripture, how does God delight in me? Because he delights in me when I'm, I'm being obedient to his word. He delights in me when I'm living a holy life. He delights in me when I'm, I'm doing the things he's commanded me to do. Because remember, the apostle Paul in, in Romans chapter 7 said the commandments is holy it's just it's good so he come on somebody he is delighting in me because I'm doing the things that God has commanded me to do and when I want to get out of line the Holy Ghost says wait a minute when you really got the Holy Ghost yes and that's another time when you really got the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will actually tell you you out of line exactly right so I don't have to have the pastor telling me this this and this that's right when I when I would do good evil is ever present but guess what happens the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost lifts up a standard and says wait a minute you open you you going to say something you shouldn't say the Holy Ghost says you know what guess what and I'm gonna deal with this issue you know when the Sun goes down what day is that Sabbath. It's a Sabbath. I should be at Walmart. That's right. Help me somebody. That's right. That's right. If I'm a Sabbath keeper, what should I be doing? I should be All keeping the Sabbath. Bring the Sabbath. Right? That's right. If you if you a Sabbath keeper, guess what God could expect you to do? Keep it. Keep the Sabbath. Yes. So and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna shut up. The danger for us is commandment keepers is that we get on people because they don't keep the commandments. 
It'd be a shame for you to know the commandments of God and just disobey them. That's right. Because if you ain't Sabbath keeper, keep your Sabbath. That's right. At the going down of the sun is the Sabbath day. I know what I'm supposed to do and not do on the Sabbath. And here's the thing. He said, if you call the Sabbath of the life, he said, I'll call you to what? Not upon the high place. And feed you with what? Yeah. 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 He said, for the mouth of the Lord. Come on. That's right. That's right. He said, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Oh, yeah. That's and because right. God's mouth, he spoke it. Yes. So this is the thing we got to get better at. We can't be half-time Sabbath keepers. That's, That's right. right. Come on. That's right. Amen, somebody. That's right. That's right. You know the Sabbath is the Sabbath. That's right. Then keep the Sabbath. That's right. Because That's right. here's the other thing I'll tell you. God will test you in the Sabbath. Yeah. God will test on yeah. whether or not you're going to keep the Sabbath. That's right. And there's some things that God will say, guess what? I'm gonna, he did that to the children of Israel. He said, I'm going to prove you. Yes, sir. If you got it or you don't. Yes, sir. And he will keep proving you until you get it right. That's right. And so this point about the law and the grace is we got to be mindful as commandment keepers that we don't have step in this thing too. Right. So I'm going to just say this. If you're a commandment keeper, keep the commandments. That is right? So Especially the Sabbath. That is so All of the commandments you got to keep. Yes. But you know what? It shouldn't be named amongst the saints. Yeah. It's a Sabbath day and you at Walmart. That's right. right. It's a Sabbath day and you doing something you know you shouldn't be doing. That's right. When I came into the house of God, they taught holiness is right. Yeah. That's right. Get saved, get sanctified, get filled with the Holy Ghost. That has not changed. This is the anniversary, so I'm going to talk anniversary. All right. All right. All right. This is our anniversary yeah. That's right. of a hundred years. That's that right. God revealed something to an uneducated man. That's right. right. And people down at that old church didn't have nothing. But no. what did they have? They, they had know. faith in God. Yeah. And guess what they heard? They heard, you know what? Saturday is a Sabbath. Yeah. Think about this. And Apostle, I'm going to give it to you because I'm getting excited. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it says we got to get this thing right. We got to right. get this right. That's right. Charlie Lewis couldn't read or write from my understanding. That's right. So think about that. He signed his name with an X. He signed his name with an X. But he got somebody to write a letter to the railroad. Yes. Yeah. And say, listen, God revealed something to me. Come on, yeah. somebody. Yeah. God revealed that the Saturday is his Sabbath. Yes. And you know what? Um, I need that day off from work. So think about that time period. Here's this man asking to be off from his job. You know how crazy that is? Yeah, a very comfy position. In a, in a truck walk. Yeah, rail, on the railroad. railroad. railroad yeah. And what happened? They just said, listen, if there would be an emergency, would you help? That's the history, right? right? Poor man. He said it's a mighty poor man who wouldn't help his brother. <laughs> and but guess what he did? He, along with his family, and then other people came, the bishops came, they actually began, they came together, and the history says people would blow smoke in the windows, mm -hmm. they had burned down one of the churches, and then they start having churches in their homes. Why? Because God revealed something to them that yeah, for the yes. last hundred years, guess what? They yeah, held on to it. it. That's yeah. right. That Those so early saints, they gave up a lot to keep what we take, we may take for granted. And I'm gonna say this. They kept the Sabbath. That's right. yes. They kept the commandments. That's right. They did everything God commanded them to do, and people were laughing at them. People yeah. were mocking them. People were calling them holy rollers and all these things. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Because they didn't give in, we sit in AC today. Yeah. You know, because they didn't give in, yeah. guess what? We got the benefit of somebody actually standing up for the Sabbath day and the commandments of God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and all this good teaching. Don't let it be us that lets things down. Right. Don't let it be us that we become halfway Sabbath keepers and commandment right. keepers. Right. Because if we are the ones who do that, their blood is on our hands. Yeah. I'm done. I just want to say, um, and kind of tie to Charmaine's uh, question about the Holy Ghost. People years ago, even today, when they came into this church, they saw the ex outward expression of having the Holy Ghost. Mm. They saw the praise. They heard the saints speaking in tongues. They saw them dancing and rejoicing. But that was just a refreshing. Mm. The important thing was the Holy Ghost, that when they left the church, the Holy Ghost guided them through the week. And, and when something came up that they didn't know what to do or how to do, the Holy Ghost taught them how to do it. So the Holy Ghost doesn't come just make you jump and shout. That's right. You know, that, that, that's that's right. not the exercise. 
But the thing that the Holy Ghost comes, it comes to keep you. That's right. It comes to lead you. It comes to guide you. Come to instruct in all these things to, to, to give you something to rejoice about. And I think Sister Rhonda has a question somebody has presented. Yes. Um, question and I guess slash comment. Um, whether we had discussed um, that the Sabbath, keeping of the Sabbath hinges on not only our love for God, but our love towards one another. Yes. Comment or question? Oh. <laughs> so, and I want to just deal with the commandments overall. Uh, if you love me, you'll do what? Keep my commandments. He said, the first commandment is, I love God. It's like the Shema in, I think, Deuteronomy 6. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Yes. So he's one. But he says, love me with all your heart, your soul, and strength. Everything you got, love me. Right. Then he says, the second is like unto it. I got to love my neighbor. Yeah. So if you keep it the Sabbath and you can't love your neighbor, you're still breaking the commandments. That's right. That's right. That is that's, right. A, that's just plain. I can actually... The, the danger, and this is why people say we're legalists, is that I can keep the I can keep the commandments to the letter, and if I don't have love, then actually all I'm doing is practicing. That's legalism. Yes. Legalism is I'm doing something because I feel like it's going to do something for me, yes, and I don't have the love in it. When you truly love God, you're gonna keep His commandments and you're gonna love His people. John says it best. He said, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen and then what? Hate, hate your, brother. your brother. He said, that's not true. That's not true. So I just, that's my thought on that. Hey, I get excited when we go into this lesson. So I'm going to wrap it up with this and then I'm going to give it to Apostle. When we think foundationally about keeping God's commandments, if you're a commandment keeper, you should be excited. I'm going to be honest with you. If you keep God's commandment, now let's lay this out. We believe in Jesus Christ. This is after you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is after you've repented of your sins. You, you have relationship with Jesus Christ. That's foundational. That's the key. But once you come into relationship with Jesus, the question has to be, what are the expectations in the relationship? He wants me to get sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And when I get those things, or even before I get those, I can still keep God's commandments. And the commandments of God are the, are the rules that he has put in place for my benefit. So if you're truly a commandment keeper, I hope you've taken from this lesson, get excited about it. Be excited about God's revealed his commandments to you. And this just isn't for this church in Cobham or Gordonsville. Right. This is for the body of Christ. Yes. Apostle. Um, I just want to touch a little bit, and I'm going to get to Charmaine, then I have my final step of words, about this, this love piece. See, this, this is a trick. You can keep the commandments. You won't break not one of them. They can talk about observing mm -hmm. the Sabbath, not being caught, not being able, not even have a desire to go to Walmart on the Sabbath or anything else like that. Keep all of God's commandments. Have the gift of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Once you have those two things, it's only one way that Satan can attack you. Mm. That's good. Lack of love. That's right. So as much as we put an emphasis on keeping the commandments and, and having the Holy Ghost, we have to put an equal emphasis on not letting Satan trick me that I don't love my brothers. We, and we can say, oh, I love everybody. Well, mm -hmm. But your love is shown. Amen. Love is, 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 is action. Right. And if you don't have a display of that love, you said you possess, all of the rest of it is in vain. Amen. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm keeping this commandment, but where's the love? If I, if Satan had, and that, that's the only thing Satan can get into us with, is love. And in this church here, a commandment keeping church, a Holy Ghost believing church, we have to make sure, yes. make sure that when in Satan move in and try to take my love, the love away that I have for one of the saints, I got to fight that thing. That's right. That's right. Say that make me think that I don't need to say unto him. I ain't even to speak to him. I see him mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keep moving. That's Satan, Satan got you. He tricked you. That's right. Even when somebody make you feel uncomfortable, don't allow the way they made you feel mm. affect the fact that I got, I am going to display the love of God. Why don't you have your final words and I'll come back and close your
Jesus Christ. Wasn't this a good lesson? Amen. Uh, certainly, wasn't it a good lesson? Amen. 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 So, the Word of God is just like that. It has some for all of us. Amen. We that are keeping the commandments of God, we that don't. But it is a beautiful thing how Christ laid the plan of salvation out. That He has enabled us to have the necessary things to obey Him. Mm. Isn't that a beautiful Amen. thing? Amen. He, he died, he laid it all out and gave us his spirit so that we can love him and obey him the way he wants us That's to right. love right. and obey him. So I thank God for that. Thank you all for attending the Sabbath school. And tr I trust that you've been strengthened. I trust that you've been strengthened. And if we found those places with us that we Lord, we still haven't gotten to where we need to be. Don't you know he even said he we, we have an advocate with him? That's right. Man. That's oh, right. my God. That's right. Oh, I love That's him right. so. Love right. him so. He, we have an advocate with him. That we can get that thing straight and get out of Walmart and make sure we in here on the Saturday like we're supposed to be. Praise God for Praise Jesus. God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey, Amen. We thank, we thank God. So I'm going to close this part out. The Sabbath school. We're going to end the Sabbath school and turn it into the hands of our Apostle Raglan. We I came here ready, y'all, thanks to praise God. We thank God for our anniversary. Amen. I know we're going to officially celebrate it, but we're going to get some time in today Amen. celebrating and thanking God for 100 years. 100 years. And over 50 some odd years, I was a part of that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We turned it to the hands of our pastor. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Shaman. Thank you, God. Deacon Preston. For leading the Sabbath school lesson on today. To those that have called in, those that have viewed us week in and week out, we thank God for you. I, I get um, phone calls and texts from different ones in the community that, that share this time with us. And I trust that they understand that, that they, and one thing they know about us, we don't attack anybody. Right. We, we just try to bring the truth of God to a place that people can understand, amen. I don't I don't desire to see anybody lost. That's right. It is my desire that all the name, the name of the Lord, make it and have the everlasting life. Now let me just say, back to the anniversary piece, um, you know, when, like I said, when March came and all this happened, we just kind of shut down the planning because we knew the hotels um, and, and those that we had invited in today was going to be the, the uh, climax of a week of activities, but it didn't happen that way. But I, as, on this weekend, I apologize to those that uh, feel that was the last minute. I said, we want to do something. This, you know, this is the 100th year. Sure. Yeah. And we, we really want to have some form of celebration. So today we open up the dining room um, for, because we only have 40 or so in the sanctuary, but we open up the dining room for an overflow that uh, we have a couple of monitors in there that those saints that are, um, that outside of the number 40 will be able to be in the dining room and, and just feel a part. And, and then when this is over, we'll have cake and something to drink, probably water. But anyhow, we have, we'll have that just it's not the full celebration, but it will is a way of recognizing that. And we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We might do something a little different this afternoon. We might give you more of a chance for some expressions and, and whatnot that we wouldn't have done because normally we condense our service and uh, we, we don't do things like we, we have done. But today is going to be an exception. All right. We give the saints an opportunity to have some expression. Um, and I, again, after all this is over, so it might be a little longer than what you've been used to seeing us or hearing us uh, on Facebook Live. But I, I just want the, the saints to be able to say, I thank God for the 100 years. You know, yes. I thank God. So Charlene was just saying, I, she said, I've been here 50 plus of those 100 years. You know, and I've been here a long time too, so, <laughs> but, my, but my point is, there's somebody here longer than I have, but I just want to say that we thank God right. for this opportunity, so we'll open up a little bit and make an exception today, but just be mindful of social distancing, be mindful of, of the things that, you know, we're asked to do, um, and, and we will do those things, let us enjoy one another, enjoy what God has done for this church on today, amen. <laughs> Amen. And the we were talking earlier about the suffering and the things that uh, Elder Lewis and, and others done just to, so we can be here today. They're going on. They're going off the same. 
We had Mother Adams funeral this week and looking at some of the headstones down there. You know, some of them have been gone a long time, but we're still here and we're still holding up the blood stand banner of the Lord. So God bless you. Uh, we'll bring this to a close. And I know that there's some setting up they need to do uh, because of the music we had. Um, the reason why it's not set up because we were tossing back and forth about whether we're going to have the afternoon service outside. It's so hot today, 97 degrees. Humidity is up there. And that's how I, I, I can't be giving y'all mouth to mouth resuscitation. I took the first aid class, but you know, with this pandemic, I just have to. <laughs> so we'll say uh, so long to you until 1 o'clock. Amen. God bless you.